When it comes to game changes and disruption, I really don't think it gets any bigger than this. I mean, we're talking complete disruption of the telecom market. It's about to happen. And it's such an enormous positive for users. Guys, when I rode my, my push bike around the world for 12 months, I traveled through lots of different countries and getting a SIM card and a phone was a real pain in the ass. Now, I had a phone, yeah, sure. This was actually back in the pre-smartphone days, right before, right, right in that point where the iPhone was about to come out. You can see how old I am, right? But it's still a problem now. Phones have gotten so much better, but this, this massive issue of being able to use a phone in different countries and different continents all around the world is still a major pain. And that's why I love the concept of SpaceX with Starlink, right? Imagine being able to use Starlink for say your home internet, uh, your mobile internet, and just be able to use that internet in any country around the world and it making no difference. Now, I don't know of any phone provider where you can get roaming outside of your home country that costs the same amount. Generally, it's about five to 10 times more expensive to use your phone in another country unless you find a new SIM card, sign up with a new provider. It's all a big pain. But SpaceX with Starlink will change that. And it's about to happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to the new subscribers. Great to have you guys. Welcome back. Everyone else, what am I talking about here? What am I going on about? Well, I'm not talking about, by the way, we just saw that small SpaceX satellite dish on top of the Cybertruck. I'm going to guess when you order your Cybertruck, you'll be able to order that as an option. Makes sense, right? That would be cool. I'm talking about SpaceX's Starlink internet. So right now, SpaceX have been working on Starlink for phones, being able to basically just sign up to get a Starlink service. So rather than using Telstra or whatever company you guys use in the US or whatever you guys use in the UK, whatever you guys use in Europe, I don't remember what SIM cards I bought back then, but I had to buy SIM cards in those specific countries. Apparently, Starlink for phones will be available in 2024. Now this service was meant to be in beta last year, but it's been pushed back because well, the key reason is because Starlink have been focusing, or SpaceX, sorry, I should say, have been focusing on getting the Starship to orbit. Obviously, Elon Musk has his priorities, and that is the Starship. Whether or not that's getting to the moon or getting to Mars, that seems to be their priority. But they are still working on this, and they say that it will actually be live next year. SpaceX's satellite-powered mobile telephony surface should be available in 2024 according to recent changes on the web page. Direct to call will allow text, voice, and data services from Starlink's V2 or version 2 satellites. Now, at the moment, they only have around 5,000 satellites worldwide. The service still works really well, though. I mean, for example, here in Australia, in the middle of nowhere, it works really, really well. I've seen lots and lots of good reviews. So what's crazy about this is that they're planning on having 45,000 satellites and they only have 5,000 today. Meaning you could be on Mount Everest, you could be in, in the Gobi Desert, I don't know where, anywhere, Antarctica, you'll have internet service. That's a huge problem even today. This is a real literal game changer. Launched more than 30 years ago though, satellite based telephone services are still as challenging to use now as they were back then. And they're also extremely, extremely expensive. With the advent though of satellite-based internet services, thanks to Starlink, interest in this option has significantly grown. There's a lot of people saying this would be amazing. Apple introduced it in their latest iPhone, but limited it to emergency purposes and nothing beyond basic techs. Why? Well, because Apple doesn't own the actual service itself. Apple has to pay for this. Apple doesn't own any cell phone towers. Apple has to basically, if you make an emergency text, it costs them money because they have to pay the satellite providers. Starlink's approach though to a full range of services is not only an industry leading game changer, but it's also exceptionally ambitious. Starlink can afford to envision ambitious products since each component of the service 
from making satellites to launching them is controlled in-house by SpaceX and everything's made in-house by SpaceX. I mean, they're vertically integrated in a similar way to what Tesla is. For its phone-based emergency texting services, Apple teamed up with Global Star, a company whose satellites orbit the Earth at an altitude of 869 miles, or 1,400 kilometers above Earth. So a long way. To tap into its network, an Apple user, even during an emergency, needs to use a signal targeting app to find themselves in the range of the satellite and send the text message. Now, interesting engineering says that Starlink satellites, however, orbit much closer at an altitude of 341 miles or only 550 kilometers, meaning about one third of the distance. So they're much, much closer to the Earth. And as of today, Starlink has more than 5,000 satellites in orbit compared to Global Star's 48. So 48 compared to 5,000 is insane. But the fact that they're going to go from 5,000 to 45,000 shows you that they're basically going to completely monopolize this market. By the time the direct to sell service is launched, the number will not only have increased, but will also be empowered with more powerful, much better working version two satellites from SpaceX. Recently, SpaceX launched its Mini V2 satellites into orbit, but has plans to have a constellation of V2 satellites that are much bigger and have larger antenna that serve a greater surface area. They say they'll even have tiny devices like today's smartphones without the need for any modification or upgrades whatsoever. In other words, you'll have, be able to use SpaceX internet and phone service on your mobile phone. This is just, to me, a st truly staggering idea. Starlink service offerings will be powered through Long-Term Evolution, or LTE, the 4G wireless network, which is in use today in almost every country worldwide, and accessible to users right from the day of launch. Users who often face mobile dead zones could simply sign up for cell, direct to cell and use mobile services beam from space. Now, I don't know how things are in the United States or the UK. I'm going to guess you guys have pretty good phone service in the UK, but here in Australia, it's terrible. Even if you get the best service, it's shocking. Probably 80% of the country doesn't have any phone cell service whatsoever. Or if they do, a lot of that is extremely patchy. I'm going to guess it's similar in many countries around the world. So this will completely change this. Now, if you go to the Himalayas or you, know, you go on a trek through the Karakoram Range or somewhere outside off the beaten track, you need to rely on a satellite phone. And that even often doesn't work. You can imagine why. There's only 40, 48 satellites in use. If the satellite is in the right position, well, you're gonna have to wait until it is. And who knows how long that would take, especially considering how far away they are from the Earth. Now on the website today, Starlink says it plans to begin text-based services by next year, with voice, data, and internet services being available in 2025. So it's still a ways off, but it's not that far. The plan might seem ambitious, but at least it's coming from SpaceX themselves. And Gwyn Shotwell, of course, is the, the president of SpaceX. She seems to deliver on her promises. In fact, to be fair, SpaceX deliver on their promises at a much higher ratio than any other space company in the history of mankind. So you gotta give them credit there where credit is due because, I mean, for example, uh, what exactly are Boeing, NASA, and all these other companies doing when it comes to getting rockets into orbit? Eh, not much. Blue Origin? Not much. Anyway, the biggest hurdle, says interesting engineering, along the way is how Starlink will put its V2 satellites up in space. These are bigger satellites, and they need a larger launch vehicle in the form of Starship to be put into orbit, which is the reason for SpaceX focusing on getting Starship up into the air in the first place. Now, of course, you probably know by now that Starship's first flight didn't exactly go quite to plan. They did have an unscheduled explosion or whatever SpaceX call it. It did get up there in the air, but it did end up exploding. I believe it was a malfunction in one of the rockets that caused, caused some other malfunctions. But it shouldn't be long before SpaceX have Starship in the air again. I don't believe, considering their track record, which is incredible, that it will be too far away. Starlink has already pushed back though the launch of the beta service that was due this year following Starship's misfiring. But to be fair, 
They did recently get astronauts from NASA to the International Space Station on a couple of occasions. So they seem pretty well likely on the way to getting Starship into orbit. Apart from Starlink, users can also subscribe to these services through the current telecom providers with whom Starlink is keen to tie up in various countries. So there's many countries worldwide where you can already get Starlink. If you're wondering if you're, if you're using satellite internet and it's not Starlink, well, good chance for a similar price, sometimes even less money, you can get Starlink and it works at a much, much faster speed. In fact, Starlink speeds, their internet speeds are better than the internet speeds on the broadband network here in Australia, which is ridiculous, but they are. So guys, I'm really looking forward to this because one of the big advantages, like I said, is being able to travel the world, travel through many countries worldwide. It might just be a city where, yeah, they have their own internet. Sure, if you want to sign up for a, a new plan and work out how to get that operating, which sometimes can, it's a real hassle. And then to obviously recharge it, then it's a hassle. But this system enables you to not even have to think about that. You, you could just have, you know, Starlink internet on your phone that could power your house. And then you could use it in whatever country you travel to. If you go on a hike, like I said, anywhere, if you go on a, a ship to Alaska, if you're in an airplane, imagine the purposes and uses for this. I, I think that this is going to be a huge market for Starlink. I'm talking billions of dollars. The disruption that will happen to the global, global telecom network is so enormous. It's probably hard to fully understand at this point in time. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.